Last year, I won a silver medal at the Sochi Olympics for Canada in the pair division of team figure skating. Thank you. It's right here. This is what the physical manifestation of my life's work looks like. A chunk of metal. Can you touch it? Eventually. <laughs> Jerry, it looks like I've known. You said you don't know what you're doing. I've known what I've been doing since I was five. Uh, at the age of three, I started skating at McCormick Arena in Parkdale. And at five, I stated that I not only want to go to the Olympics, I want to win the Olympics. Basically, everything from that point on in my life has led me to this point. I don't have a book. I just have this. And I have my family, which uh, is, you know, they have a plethora of stories that could probably fill an entire bookshelf. Uh, my journey's been a little different. I am the, the very rare percentage of people that know what they want at a very young age. Uh, and to reach the pinnacle of my career um, has taken a lot of work, years and years and years of training. Um, right now I train six days a week, four to seven hours a day, all over the city, on and off the ice. I have a team of coaches. I have two on-ice technical coaches. I have a stroking edges and polishing coach. I have a choreographer. I have two dance instructors. I have a Pilates instructor, a strength instructor. At the end of the Sochi Olympic season, my partnership ended unexpectedly. I was completely blindsided. Five-year partnership. We had promised each other another four years, and the next thing I knew was 29 years old, still in love with my sport, and partnerless. I had no idea what I was going to do. I had no idea if there was a point in continuing. At 29 in figure skating, that's kind of old. It may seem young in life, but I was pretty much a grandfather. Was there even a partner I could find that would be worthwhile pursuing? I knew that if I was going to continue, I'd have to reinvent myself as an athlete. I decided I'd have to swallow my pride. I moved back to Toronto, left my coaches of 12 years. I trained in Waterloo for seven years. And I started all over again. I had to let go of so much that I had known and be thirsty for new knowledge so I could create a new me. My now partner, Lubov Ilyushetchkina, don't try and say it, it's impossible. She moved here from Moscow to skate with me. She uplifted her entire life, jumped on a plane. Next thing you know, she's living in Canada. We realized that we needed to take our two previous styles and create something new. We could not look the same as we had looked before. We took her Russian training, my Canadian mentality, took the best of both worlds and put them together. We soaked up everything from our team with a wealth of knowledge, experience, and creativity. And the result was six months later, we came second at the national championships, a birth on the world team, and created new lifts and moves that the world had never seen. It's important to use your resources, to be innovative, to collaborate, to start something new. Sometimes taking a step backwards, stirring the pot, is the only way that you can see what your next best, best move is. In figure skating, we have to take a lot of risks, not only physically, not only the obvious ones, but strategic moves as well. Every year, we have to let go of one or both of our programs, our routines, that we've just finished perfecting, we just got fully comfortable with, and start over and start something new. Try something completely new. New way of moving, new style, new characters, new theme. It's really awkward. If you can imagine, on TV, it looks all polished and ready and we're very comfortable. When it starts, we're tripping over each other, we're banging into each other. It's very frustrating, it's exhausting. And it, it's very humbling. I think it's very important to see that in sport, but also in life, it's when we get complacent, things get too easy that we stop to, we stop to move, uh, we cease to grow and excel and move forward. Sometimes you need to break the mold. Sometimes you need to put yourself in an uncomfortable situation in order to see where you can improve. Try not to. In my sport, I don't have to talk. So there's this quote in the gym where I used to train that said, your attitude almost always determines your altitude in life. This rings so true for me for so long because I, I strongly believe that we all have the power to manifest our own success. That positivity breeds positivity. And being aware of the energy that we bring forth is extremely useful.
Jerry talked about uplifting others and how it can push you to the next level. When you bring up everybody around you, when you create a positive, motivating, inspiring environment for people to thrive, it comes back to you tenfold. It's not only about making yourself your best, it's about, ma about making those around you their best. And in the end, it makes you better for it. There are many moments in life that challenge our resolve, that challenge our will. And you can use these to be aware of our patterns. We can use these to be aware of what our bad habits are when faced with adversity. We can choose to be optimistic and use them to grow, or we can be crippled by them. An example of this for me was when I went to Sochi. It's a little gross. I apologize. But I arrived in Sochi with a really severe case of athlete's foot. So if anyone knows what athlete's foot is, it's like a fungal infection on your feet. I spend uh, all my day with my feet in like basically dark caves. They're boots. They're, they don't breathe. They're pretty gross. So by the time I got to Sochi, I developed secondary infections in both my feet between the fourth and fifth toes. I couldn't put my feet in my skate. So if you can imagine, from the age of five to the age of 29, 24 years of waiting for this moment, and I couldn't put my skates on. The doctor had to take these huge needles and freeze my feet every time I got on the ice. I had half my foot frozen every time I stepped on the ice to practice and compete. Not only that, afterwards, when the freezing wore off, the bottoms of my feet were completely bruised from these mammoth needles going through my foot. And I'll tell you, when they injected the, the freezing agent like onto my nerve, I've never felt anything like that in my entire life. It was horrendous. It sucked. But I decided before I got there that no matter what, I was going to live my Sochi experience. I trained, I prepared, I dreamed, I'd wished for this moment my entire life. Since before I even knew what that meant, I felt my purpose. I knew what my purpose was, and I know that's rare at five years old, up to 29, but it was in my gut. It was, it was in my bones. It was who I am, who I was, and it's still who I am. They could cut my toes off if they had to. I was skating. I went on the ice, and I enjoyed every single moment. I thrived. I remember looking at the rings as I skated over them. I remember looking up in the stands and seeing my parents there. I remembered seeing the Canadian team cheering us on. And I made sure, I made the conscious decision to enjoy every single moment. Because it can go by, it, three minutes and five minutes seems like a long time, but when it's over, and that's your life wor life's work, it's incredibly fast. If you don't take the time to stop and appreciate what's happening, it'll go by you in a blink of an eye. And I saw many athletes squander their moments because they were too focused on their outcome. They were too focused on their nerves. They were too focused on the what ifs. And the hardest part about sport at a high level is living in the moment and keeping yourself in that moment. You have to continuously keep yourself in check. And life is like that too. You can be on a high and all of a sudden you're on a low and you have to remind yourself of what you did to get out of the last low and what you did to get yourself to that high. And constant reminders are essential. I've got three minutes and five minutes to show the world what I'm made of, my entire life's work. The right attitude is everything. Taking the right approach is absolutely everything. But a champion's mentality does not only happen on the ice or in the gym, it's a way of life. Life will show us in abundance where our weaknesses lie over and over and over. It's up to us to recognize them as opportunities to train the mind like the body. I believe the mind is just like a muscle. You train it the wrong way over and over, it will respond the wrong way over and over. You train good habits over and over again, eventually it will respond under stress, under pressure, the way you want it to. It's very empowering to be in control of your end of any situation that comes at you. Bad habits are very hard to break, very hard. A lot of people bang their head against the wall trying to get past their habits, trying to get past their, their affinities, and they never quite get there because there's, al there's always this emotion that gets in the way. There's always he said, she said. There's always an excuse, and it's very easy to do. We all are, are guilty of it, but it's not impossible to break them. It takes the right amount of awareness, attention, intention, and a whole lot of willpower. 
you have to be willing to push through the hardest times. As Jerry said, if you're in hell, don't stop because you're in hell. Keep pushing through. And that is essential for getting through any obstacle. I want you all to close your eyes. Jerry stole this from me. Jerk. <laughs> Apparently, I've been talking, you know, doing motivational speaking longer than him or something. He stole my, he stole my lines. All right, close your eyes. I'm, I'm looking to see if there's any open eyes, especially you at the front row. I can see you. Creeper row. I won't poke you. There might be some legal issues with that. I want you to think about a challenge or a situation that you faced where you felt defeated or struggled. See if you can pinpoint the moment where you made a choice that put you towards your next course of action. Did you learn to grow from it? Did you use it as a learning tool? Or did it defeat you moving forward? Did it leave you with a bad taste in your mouth that you couldn't pull yourself out of? Practice identifying those moments. Be aware of your choices. They are as, if not more, valuable than successful situations. You can open your eyes. Thank you for closing them. We all have baggage. We all have struggles. and We all have patterns that we need to break. It's, the key is not to be perfect. Nobody's perfect. You cannot strive to be perfect. You can strive to be the best you, the most evolved you that you can be. And it's a choice we have to make again and again and again. You never stop making that choice. You never stop choosing to learn. You never stop choosing to grow. We all have the ability to act, behave, and think like champions. Winning attitude is something that has to occur in every aspect of our lives. You just have to be willing to see it, recognize it, and take action towards fixing it or improving it. Last thought I want to leave you with is humor. You have to have a, a sense of perspective and a sense of humor with everything in your life. Take me, for instance. I have spent basically my entire life, almost all my parents' money, sorry guys, almost all my money, some of the government's money, all of my time, killed my body, put it through hell, I've flown all over the world, I've tested my will, my patience, my perseverance. Also, I can wait my turn to prance around the ice, set to music, wearing high-heeled boots attached to swords and pitchforks, wearing sparkly fancy spandex, throwing around another human who is slightly larger than a dwarf, all in front of a small audience so they can decide my worth and my fate. It's pretty ridiculous. You all have to have a sense of humor with what you do and a sense of perspective. As we're chasing our life goals, as we're, we're searching for the next success, don't forget to enjoy the journey. Thank you.